Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we've got a tale of sea battles, international intrigue, and name changes. We're diving deep into the life of John Paul Jones. Ah, the rock star of the seas. Wait, was he in a band? Wrong John Paul Jones Chuck. But I can see the confusion. Today, we're talking about the revolutionary naval commander, not the bassist from Led Zeppelin. Oh right. That makes more sense, especially considering we're a history podcast and not a rock and roll show. Born simply as John Paul in 1747, in Kirkubrishia, Scotland, Jones came from humble beginnings. He began his seafaring career at the age of 13. Early life on the sea, eh Chuck? What were you doing at 13? Trying not to sink in the local swimming pool. Good thing you weren't drafted into the Navy then. Absolutely. Now, Jones wasn't just a sailor. He came from a family of gardeners. They had the Scottish earth beneath their nails so to speak. Speaking of family, the Pauls weren't nobility, but they were honest, hard-working folk. John took to the sea and eventually found himself engaged in the transatlantic trade, primarily between Britain and the Americas. Which brings us to the shipping trade. The 18th century Atlantic was bustling. Everything from sugar to slaves was shipped, and Jones was in the middle of it. However, his early maritime career wasn't without its controversies. After a few incidents, including accusations of brutally disciplining crew members, Jones found himself in a bit of a pickle. That's one way to put it. Things got so heated for him in the West Indies that he had to hightail it out of there. But not just that, he even changed his name. Yep. From John Paul to John Paul Jones. Sounds cooler, doesn't it? It's like adding a the third or esquire at the end of your name. Instant class. Let's switch gears and delve into Jones's political beliefs. While he began his career serving British interests, he eventually became a staunch supporter of the American Revolution. Revolutionary at sea, revolutionary at heart. By the time the American Revolution kicked off, Jones was fully on board with the colonists. He believed in their cause and was ready to lend his naval expertise. Now, his military career. This is where things get juicy. John Paul Jones is often remembered as the father of the American Navy. And that's a big title to live up to. You can say that again. Jones is known for his audacious tactics and sheer determination. And while some saw him as a hero, others labeled him a pirate. A matter of perspective I guess. You know Chuck, they say one man's pirate is another man's patriot. Well said. Now, let's talk ships. One of his most famous ships was the Bonhomme Richard. The name was a nod to Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac. Ah, Ben Franklin. Inventor, diplomat, and occasional ship namer. The Bonhomme Richard was originally an East Indiaman, and Jones turned it into a warship. Which brings us to that famous naval battle, the Battle of Flamborough Head. Against the British warship HMS Serapis. And this is where Jones shouted his famous line. Oh I love this one. When asked if he was ready to surrender, he replied, I have not yet begun to fight. Talk about badass. Definitely t-shirt worthy. Now, throughout his naval career, Jones had a series of orders, but one of his primary missions was to harass British shipping and challenge the might of the Royal Navy. And he did so with flair. From France to Britain's own waters, Jones's naval campaigns were a thorn in the side of the British. Okay, we're going to take a short break. But stick around because when we come back, we'll dive into Jones's later life, his death, and a few more jokes, because why not? Oh, and did you hear about the time Jones? Hold that thought Chuck. After the break. When the world hits hard, hit back harder with Strike Force Energy. The zero sugar, zero calorie, power-packed energy drink additive that fuels your adventure. Just a quick squeeze turns any drink into a relentless power source. Perfect for your workout, your hike, your life. Ready to strike? Visit StrikeForceEnergy.com, use coupon code UTSALAX24 for an explosive 20% off your order. Strike Force Energy, unleash your potential. Strike Force Energy, fuel the fight within you. Welcome back, listeners. We were deep in the waters of John Paul Jones's life. 
So, after his naval career, Jones ended up in Russia. Did you know he served as a rear admiral for Catherine the Great? I did. It's a lesser known part of his history. From fighting the British to serving the Russians, Jones was truly an international man of mystery. Unfortunately, his stint in Russia wasn't as glorious. He faced political intrigues and was eventually forced to leave. But his heart remained with the sea. And like all great tales, this one has an end. Jones died in Paris in 1792, aged 45. An unsung hero in foreign lands, he was initially buried in an unmarked grave. It wasn't until the early 20th century that his remains were exhumed and brought to the U.S., where he was given a hero's burial at the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis. A fitting tribute to the father of the American Navy. Indeed. But before we close off, remember the joke about the time Jones and his crew went fishing? Oh boy do enlighten us. They caught a lot of fish, but always insisted on calling them, sea soldiers. Classic. Always the naval man. Well, that's it for this episode on John Paul Jones. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the life of a naval icon. We'll be back tomorrow with another historical figure or event. Until then, keep your history hats on, and remember to float, not sink. Stay afloat listeners. And thanks for tuning into the History AI Podcast. Please like, subscribe and share the podcast and we will see you tomorrow.